Speaker, and I just want to thank the gentleman from Maryland for yielding me the customary 30 minutes, and I would yield myself the balance of my time, or as much time as I may consume. Th nice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the role before us today provides for consideration of a resolution holding Peter Navarro and Daniel Scavino in contempt of Congress. From the very beginning, the Select Committee has been nothing more than a partisan tool used by House Democrats to attack their political opponents. Time and time again, they have run roughshod over our Constitution. They've run roughshod over the very rules of this institution, and to what end? To advance their own political agenda. We can look no further than the resolution establishing the committee to see their complete regard, complete disregard for this chamber. House Res 503 states the Speaker shall, shall appoint 13 members, five of whom shall be appointed after consultation with minority leaders. Neither of those shalls, neither of those shall clauses have been met. While this may seem insignificant to my colleagues across the aisle, it's certainly of consequence to the courts. Let's talk about some case law. United, Yellen versus the United States. There, the court reversed the conviction of contempt of Congress because a congressional committee failed to adhere to, adhere to its own rules. The court explained, and I quote, the committee prepared the groundwork for prosecution in Yellen's case, yet it is not too exacting to require that the committee be equally meticulous in obeying its own rules. I suggest that my Democratic colleagues heed those words. As a former Navy JAG, I'm deeply troubled by the committee's treatment of Mr. Scavino, including clear due process violations. The Select Committee repeatedly demanded almost immediate responses from Mr. Scavino while waiting for weeks, weeks to provide responses to his correspondences. Further, the Select Committee has shown complete disregard for Mr. Scavino's legal duty. His legal duty to invoke the executive privilege, which he was instructed to do by President Trump. There is no legal authority that the incumbent president is the final arbiter as to whether executive privilege may be asserted for congressional testimony of close aides to a former president. The Presidential Record Act applies only to presidential records within control of the National Archives. That's it. It's a very narrow uh, statute. That act does not control whether testimony can be given. Let's talk about some more case law, the United States versus Nixon. The Supreme Court held in that case, and I quote, communications between a president and his closest aides are entitled to a presumption of privilege of confidentiality, which can be own, overcome only by a particularized showing of a need in a criminal case, end quote. I want to emphasize criminal case. This is not a criminal case. Finally, the select committee initially provided Mr. Scavino with 15 topics which they wanted to discuss. That list later grew to 33. The select committee then went so far as to place the onus on Mr. Scavino, stating that's his responsibility to, and I quote, identify the specific topics outside the scope of his asserted privilege, end quote. As I'm sure my friend across the aisle knows, and any lawyer on the other side of the aisle knows, the burden is not on the subject of the deposition to identify the topics on which they can be questioned. The Supreme Court found, and here's some more case law, in Watkins versus the United States, the Supreme Court found in that case, and I quote, a person compelled to testify is entitled to have knowledge of the subject to which the interrogation is deemed pertinent, end quote. If the select committee wanted to conduct a legitimate investigation, they would not be rushing to hold Mr. Scavino, Mr. Scavino in, attempt, in contempt after imposing unreasonable and unattainable timelines, ignoring legitimate assertions of a privilege, and then refusing legitimate accommodations. It's clear the resolution before us today is not about a witness's refusal to, to testify or to, uh, refusing to comply with the congressional subpoena. This is all about Democrats' needs to further their partisan agenda. I urge my colleagues not to vote, to vote no on the previous question and vote no on the rule. And with that, Madam Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time.